Hey guys, I'm back and I'm so excited to share a major makeup investment. I have a set of Artiste brushes to review for you guys. They're incredibly expensive. I'm going to break them all down for you, see if it's worth the cost. And I also even have the Artiste cleaning pad and foam cleanser to test out. So basically we're testing the whole Artiste system to see if it is worth it. So let's just jump right in. Starting with this guy who is also my favorite. This is the Artiste Elite Oval 8. So this is huge. You can see it's like as big as my cheek. And it's flat on top as well. It almost looks like, like a hairbrush that your grandma would have had. You know? It's heavy, but it's not like super heavy. All the weight is really in the head of the brush. Although you can kind of maybe tell they were trying to balance it out with the handle. But yeah, this is the Oval 8. And it's basically for foundation, really. Something that's going to take up the majority of your face. It's also really good for blending out like your cheek products once they're already applied. Next here, I've got the Oval 6. And you can see how much smaller it is compared to the Oval 8. And there is a brush in between this size. And this one's really good, again, for like blush, but mainly I use it for like under the eye. Really like the big surface area. This brush is a lot more like domed on top. It's not quite as flat as the Oval 7. Next I have the Oval 4, which you can see is quite a bit smaller than the Oval 7. Oval 6. And again, it's kind of the same shape as the Oval 6. This one really looks like a toothbrush, right? It's like literally the toothbrush. Again, it's really good for under your eye, eyeshadows, maybe like detail highlight work. You can see it's super domed on top. I also have the Oval 3, which when you compare it to the Oval 4, is quite a bit smaller. And the shape is getting a lot more straight, like it's a lot less oval and more like getting into straight line uh, shape. So again, this would be like for eye work, for highlight work, really more precise stuff, of course. I have the circle one, which is just a circle. This looks like a dentist drill. It's good for like concealing the spots on your face, blending stuff out. Really precision stuff, I guess on your eyes it would be good. The circle one is also like super flat on top. There's no doming at all, just completely flat. Quite long bristles. And finally, this is the linear one where it's basically a straight line. And this one, of course, for eyeliner or eyebrows, something along those lines. There's a close-up look of the linear one. These brushes, Doug was actually super nice enough to get these for my birthday, maybe a year ago. He got me a five set brush and then I ended up ordering one of these big oval ones myself because I really like, like the huge oval one. I ended up with six brushes and then to store them all because they are a little bit wonky to store, I ended up just hopping onto Amazon and I got this little holder mange on it, mange. And it's just a kind of silver lace acrylic holder, which you can see I've glued together because it used to like come apart. And this is perfect because it's made for oval brushes. So your brushes just sit in there and do their thing. Now the weird thing is, so all these brushes fit beautifully in here. Except for this linear one, which no matter what hole goes in here, it's like a different shape and it doesn't fit all the way down, which is kind of annoying. I don't know, but uh, whatever. It's still in there securely for like sitting on your desk. But anyway, that's how I store my brushes. Now I'm just going to talk about my brushes and apply some makeup with them. By far my favorite brush out of all of these brushes is this one. If I could only have one brush, this is one that I use like every single day. It's so good. It's so effortless to like blend out your foundation. I use it with my liquid foundations or my 
spray foundations. I don't really use it with my powder products. I prefer like fluffier brushes or more rounded brushes to apply like powders. This is like HG status for me. I really can't say how much I like using it. Um, if you're using a spray foundation, it's got like a nice wide amount of bristles to like apply your foundation to. And it's like two swipes of the brush and it's like all over your face. For liquid foundations, I prefer to apply it to the back of my hand and then dot it on my face and then I'll go in with the brush. Again, it's so easy to just like blend down your neck. not too hard to like get around your nose get under your nose just get like all over you can even like dip it directly into your foundation I kind of like tap it and swirl it just to get a nice even coverage and uh, yeah it just makes foundation so quick if you have problems with like streaky foundation or not blending enough or a beauty blender taking forever this is a perfect solution. I really like it a lot. <laughs> and if I'm going to be applying like a cream contour, I tend to use this big brush as well. I feel like you can really kind of angle it against the side of your face and kind of really control exactly where you want it to go, even though it is like a humongous brush. So again, it also just takes two seconds. When it comes to blush, let's throw some blush on. I'm gonna apply like a lot of blush today. You could go in with that same big brush or you could go in with a slightly smaller one. This again is the Oval 6. And just quickly buff it in. Mmm, so good. I honestly cannot recommend these like oval the oval brushes in the oval set enough. For highlighter, I'm gonna switch down to a more precise brush. Just like that. Wow. I mean, it's seriously foolproof. I think they do a really great job. I've tried some cheap makeup brushes that are like toothbrush brushes like this prior. If you've been watching me for a while, you'll know I bought a cheap set off of Amazon, which again, I would really recommend. I ended up giving those ones to my sister when she came to visit, just because I had these ones anyway. Um, but the only thing I'll say about the cheap ones is the big, big baddie in there. It was more domed on top like this guy, and I much prefer this really flat maybe just the shape of my face or something, but I feel like the flatness of this brush just makes it a lot faster, a lot more even than the rounded one. So if you're looking for a cheap set or something, my recommendation for the big brushes is go for the flat hairbrush type, not the dome one. The dome one's fine for like other stuff, but. Continuing on to some of these smaller brushes, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of cream eyeshadow and these things are so easy you don't even really need a brush to do them but since I have them just grabbing this oval 5 and just going along the edge of the shadows just to blend everything out and keep it from getting too harsh or uneven takes two seconds and bang eyes done i also really like these smaller oval brushes a lot like a lot a lot for just applying concealer under the eyes again it takes two seconds it's nice and dense so i feel like you get a good amount of coverage i like the bigger one which is funny because my eyes aren't that big but i feel like it just gives such a nice blend and if I need to, I'll just kind of tap the inner corner. If we hop along to the eye line, I consider it an eyebrow one. I'm just going to dip into some brown eyeshadow. And just quickly fill in my brows. 
This thing really does a great job and it really helps you achieve like a straight line as well, especially because it's like just about as long as my entire tail. And with my cream eyeshadow, maybe I just want to darken it up a smudge. So I'll go back in with a tiny oval brush. Just to lay down a little bit darker eyeshadow. And then go in with an even bigger one. Just to smooth everything out. All right, again, if you follow me a lot, you'll know I'm pretty much addicted to liquid liner. But if I'm going to use a pencil and I want to smudge it out a little bit. Again, this Artiste brush makes it so easy. It's like honestly effortless. I'm pretty sure I sound like a straight up infomercial. I'm gonna just throw on some mascara. I'm just gonna clean up any messes I have with this little brush and if I had any acne and hallelujah I don't at the moment I would definitely go back in and just do some like touch-ups for concealer with this brush as well. So like I said the one thing I feel like these brushes are not optimal for is for applying powder so I'm gonna stick to my big fluffy brush for that and they do also say that you can use these artiste brushes for applying lip products but I feel like that's just a little bit too messy too much maintenance to like be cleaning your brushes that much so I tend to Stick to a normal lip brush or just go straight from the bullet. You can of course use these to like clean up the edges of your lip product so everything looks nice and smooth. But yeah there's a quick demo and look at these Artiste brushes. Honestly I probably use the circle and the linear the least amount. And I definitely feel like I use the bigger oval brushes the most amount. So if you're looking to just buy one or two, look definitely at this guy. Second of all, look at the oval stick. So oval eight, oval six, my recommendations. In terms of the price of these brushes, it is not cheap. So the set of five brushes costs about 240 Canadian dollars from Sephora, which is insane. And individually, the Elite Mirror Oval 8 is $100 freaking dollars. $100, dollars. right? So let's talk about brush maintenance. Artiste, of course, does recommend using their own brush cleansing system, which is the Artiste Brush Cleansing Foam, as well as the Premier Brush Cleaning Pad. The foam retails for 35 Canadian dollars. You get 170 grams of products and it's actually quite a hefty bottle. It says it cleanses and sanitizes and you don't need to rinse them afterwards. So really it's ideal for every time you use your brushes, if you just give them a quick sanitize, the next time you use them, they're like fresh and clean and ready to go. Here is a look at the ingredients. Let me know what you think about the ingredients as well as the directions. This brush cleansing pad retails for 85 Canadian dollars at Sephora. So it's basically a microfiber cloth in a metal container. And it is quite a hefty container. It's got like table protectors on the bottom for when you set it down. And basically to cleanse your brushes, you just wipe your brushes with the foam cleanser back and forth on the pad. Uh, it's kind of cool because it does open up just like that and the microfiber cloth is basically attached to like a thin piece of plastic so you can actually pop this into the wash and get it nice and clean which is a pretty smart idea after you've cleansed it you can just stick it back into the little clutch holder so let me quickly clean my brushes for you 
And again, if you check on Artisa's website, they do recommend that every time you use them, just give them a quick wash. The foam comes out like pretty thick and heavily and it pretty much disappears right away. Your brushes are left feeling completely dry, which is pretty cool. And you have a couple seconds to kind of like reshape the brush however you would like. They still do recommend that once in a while you do whew, give them a deep clean. I'm going to clean two brushes. One thing I've noticed is if you don't regularly clean them, the fibers can kind of like clump together. And I noticed that a little bit more on like the super cheap brushes that I was using. But it does happen on the like brand name brushes as well. All right, so everything's nice and clean. And the pad even feels dry, like it doesn't feel wet. It's really like a dry foam. It's also really strange because if you like try to touch the foam, it kind of like doesn't want to stick to your fingers. It's really strange. And of course you can use it on your normal makeup brushes as well with the microfiber pad. And again, like your powder brush, after it's been cleansed, it feels completely dry. It's very strange. As a look at my super expensive Artiste makeup brushes, my cheap little stand for them, my Artiste cleansing pad, and the Artiste brush cleansing foam. So a few more things. This big brush I ordered and maybe about six months after like using it every day, it actually snapped. And I'll insert a picture here to show you like the shock and horror of it snapping. And one thing I was shocked to find out is even though they look like metal brushes, they're actually just plastic inside. So I think, although they look super high end and luxe, they're just a plastic brush. And I'm pretty sure the bristles between the different brands are quite similar. They're all synthetic. They also, they all kind of feel the same. They kind of have the same color. It's really the cut and the size of the brush that like varies between the different models of brushes. Well, after my heart died when I broke my brush, I did reach out to Artiste to be like, what just happened? Like, I don't think I was misusing the brush. I don't think I was applying unnecessary pressure to the black brush. And they did actually send me a replacement brush for no extra charge, which was super nice of them. I really appreciated that and I thought it was good customer service. And of course it was my favorite brush in the set. So thank God I can report good customer service there. I definitely was a little bit disappointed to like kind of see the build quality of the brush. So do I actually think it's worth $100? I mean, I definitely do prefer this brush over the cheap ones that I was using because it is flat. Um, it does look a lot nicer. Were these the first people to come up with this concept? I don't know. But if they were, I feel good supporting them. So I would say if you're unsure about investing in a set of Artiste brushes, I think you definitely should consider getting like a $20 set on Amazon, seeing if you'll actually use them, kind of refining what shape and size of brush you would prefer to use every day. And then if you think it's worth it, then go up to upgrade to like maybe a select few brushes that you know you're going to love and use. As for the pad and the brush cleansing foam. These are like, I think really good investments. It looks super elegant on your desk. And I love being encouraged, I guess, to clean your brushes more every day. And aside from the fact that it costs a lot of money, I think it's really well designed and thought out. And it feels like a really good quality product. And the foam as well. If you're really into cleaning brushes and you want something that lets you use your brushes right away. This is seriously something that you should consider looking at because it's an incredible texture. It does a nice job at cleansing everything, using conjunction with the pad. I think that's a smart investment if you're super crazy makeup addicted like me. Does the average makeup user need any of this? Absolutely not. 
Thank you so much for watching. Definitely vote up here and let me know, do you think these Artiste brushes are worth the insane price point? Have you tried the actual Artiste brand? Have you tried a third party brand? I know Real Techniques make similar toothbrush type brushes. MAC has come out with some. There's tons of cheap ones on Amazon. Let me know if you've tried any of them or if you think they're super gimmicky. I would love to hear what you have to say. A huge shout out to my patrons who help bring this content to you guys. Huge shout out to my fiance Douglas for gifting me with these lovely sets of brushes. Huge shout out to you guys for watching. Thank you so much. And with that, I will see you all in my next beauty video. Have a good weekend.